second episode of What If. We'll be talking about the time in 1967 when Muhammad Ali was forced into retirement because he refused to fight in Vietnam and the repercussions I had on the heavyweight division and what if he had continued fighting and was never stripped to, of being champion. For three years and seven months to be exact, which is ridiculous. So we'll start off with a brief history of the heavyweight division at the time, talk about the key players and just kind of sit, figure out who was doing what at what time. And then we'll talk about what would have happened if he had stayed fighting in 1967 through on. So yeah, 1967, um, March, I believe it was March. Yeah, it was, it was uh, March, yep. Yeah. yeah, March 22nd, he fought at Zora Foley. So that was his final fight before being forced into retirement. And he had won the title back in February of 1964 off Sonny Liston. So, what, tell, tell us a little bit of Sonny Liston. Monster. Sonny Liston, one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Not just greatest heavyweight. He's like one of the greatest fighters of all time. He's a unbelievable fighter. Underrated. Um, he had like the more recent Anthony Joshua. And he was only like 6'1 or 2. And he was built like a brick shit house, man. He built like a monster. Physical specimen. Uh, one of the most feared heavyweights of all time. Ollie beat him twice. Yeah, and he beat him e easily. Bait. Well, the first one, he had a couple couple rounds all right, but it's pretty easy for him both times, especially the second time. So, <laughs> other key players in the division of time, we Joe Frazier was still fighting at the time. He yeah. was... Joe Frazier was ranked sixth uh, in the world by the Ring Magazine in 60, at the end of 66. And at the end of 67, uh, Muhammad Ali was still technically... Um, like he was a lineal champ, but Joe Frazier was the number one uh, contender at the end of 67. So Frazier won a vacant title in 1968 on March 3rd, a year after Ali was retired. Mm -hmm. So to me, that just goes to show there's a reason he wasn't fighting for the title when Ali was there. Yeah, <clears throat> there, um, there, there definitely was. The thing, the thing is, Ali. Um, Got stripped, right? He got stripped when he was 25 years old. He he came back when he was 28 years old, but he came back after three and a half years of basically doing nothing. His whole body looked different when he came back. Um, even when he got into peak shape after he came back, like when he got within 10, 15 pounds of, of where uh, he was, was fighting before he got stripped, he still didn't... He still wasn't even close to the same amount of agility... Uh, hand speed. He could dance around for like three, four rounds, and then he couldn't really dance anymore. When he was, before he got stripped, he was dancing for like fifteen rounds. Right. And um, which is unheard of. It's ridiculous. A lot of fighters probably couldn't even dance like that for like two rounds and have the stamina. So, so that brings me back to Sonny Liston. When Ali was forced into retirement, Frazier wins the title. Liston, after his two defeats to Ali, goes on a spree of sixteen fights. Wins 15 of those, and uh, 14 of those were by knockout. So, in my opinion, if Frazier wants to be the man, he can't fight Ali, because Ali's retired. So, who? what's the next best guy to fight? To the fought list. Sonny Liston. Yeah. So, I was, I've done some research. I was looking into it. I formulated my own opinion. A lot of people think that Liston was past it. That's why Frazier didn't fight him. Let me bring this up again. He was 15-1 and one with 14 knockouts. In a span of five years. And even if people think he was past that, he was still better than um, the dudes. Uh, the Frazier was like Fra Frazier was, yeah. Frazier's best win is against uh, flat-footed Ali, then against the light heavyweight Bob Foster, and then George Chavallo and uh, Jerry Quarry, who were never even champions. So, right. You know, if we're gonna be honest, if 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 Ali never got stripped. Frazier, you'd still know about him, but he would have never won a championship, and he would have never had that big win against Ali, and he'd probably just be known as a, a perennial contender for that era, the 70s, or late 60s and the early 70s. Right. If we're going to be honest. So, another uh, opinion a lot of people formed is that Liston was just too much for Frazier to handle. Which he would have been. He would have stopped Frazier in like two, three rounds. Even in his late 30s? Thing. That jab, the right hand. Look what he did to Floyd Patterson. It would be a similar type of fight like that. So, that if, you, if it's too much for you to handle, okay, that's fine. But you fought George Foreman. 
But the difference here is George Foreman is a gold medalist, uh, American product. The, uh, the world has embraced George. Nobody embraced Sonny Liston as a champion. No, they didn't want Nobody to liked Sonny yeah. Liston. Nobody talked about Sonny Liston. Sonny Liston won the title off Floyd Patterson, which he was basically... The, the world like, told Floyd, you have to fight this guy. Like, there was no other option. There was no one left for Floyd, Floyd to fight. Floyd wanted to fight him. It's, it's custom motto didn't want to fight. his team didn't want to because they basically knew it was going to happen. The thing is about um, uh, about Liston is there's, there's literally a documentary on YouTube called The Champ Nobody Wanted. So he was just like a, a, a tough, rugged dude who grew up um, basically... I know slavery had been abolished, but he was still working in on fields and stuff, you know, on plantations. Yeah. But what I was getting at there is, Liston won the title of Floyd Patterson. He gets home back to, I believe he's from uh, Georgia, somewhere down there south. No one is in the airport to greet him. Heavyweight champion of the world, no one comes to greet him. So it was easy for guys like Joe Frazier and Floyd Patterson to avoid tough fights for Sonny Liston. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't easy to uh, avoid Foreman because he's well, like... Liston was well known, but he was uh, more beloved than um, than Liston because he had won that gold medal. So, and it was a, a bigger money fight because of that. So Ali goes into retirement. He comes back in October twenty sixth, nineteen seventy. So three over three and a half years out, he takes on Jerry Corey. Corey was never a champion. Solid fighter. Oscar Bonavita, another solid fighter. And then he's back for five months. What's he do? He goes and fights for the title against Joe Frazier. If you go look at the Ollie that fought Liston, the Ollie that fought Cleveland Williams, the Ollie that fought uh, Floyd Patterson, all those guys leading up to the, uh, him being forced into retirement, he danced around, like you said. He moved. He snapped the jab off. He didn't get tired enough to lean on the ropes. There's no way that a Frazier would be able to catch him with a, lead, with a left hook like that. Yeah. Something was off about that fight, too, because Ollie was getting caught with the same left hook over and over again. Like, he didn't even put his right hand up to parry it or block it once. I don't know. Something was up, man. My dad always says he wore the red trunks. He thinks that the fight, there was something going on with that fight fishy because Ollie never wore those trunks, which is kind of weird. So, that being said, Frazier gets the win, and you got to give respect for that. But like we said in the Roy Jones video, Tarver beat Roy yeah. at the right time. Met the right guy at the right time. He didn't. He didn't beat. He beat a Roy was a shell of himself, and Ali was a shell of himself when when Frazier fought. And if you look down, um, Joe Frazier's resume, he, he didn't beat any other champions. No, nope. Foreman lost to him twice. Ali lost to him two more times. Uh, who else did he fight that was a champion? That might be it. He didn't fight Norton. He fought light, uh, light heavyweight champion Bob Foster. Yeah, that doesn't count. It's a light heavyweight, though. That's it. I, th I'm, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure those are the only champions they ever fought. And he never fought Cleveland Williams, right? No. Because Cleveland Williams was at the... Like, if, if we're going to be honest here, um, if you were to take Ali out of that... Uh, out of his era in the 60s, where he dominated, you would know guys like Cleveland Williams way more. Right. Just like you'd know Frazier. Right. Because to be honest... Cleveland Williams was probably the second best dude that Ali ever beat, in my opinion. If we're going to be completely honest here, uh, when it comes to talent, yeah, he, in my opinion, he was. He would have beat guys like George Foreman. He would have knocked, knocked Frazier out. He would have beat Ken Norton. And didn't Liston beat him twice? And Liston beat Cleveland Williams twice. There you go. That just goes to show how good Liston and was. And Cleveland F Williams was, uh, fought with a bullet in his back that they couldn't take out because it could have paralyzed him. This guy was a savage, monster puncher, good boxer, just very strong, athletic, big dude. I, I don't know, man. You would have heard more about, like, you would have heard a lot more about guys like him if Ollie wasn't around, even though he did lose to Liston, but he would have been fighting for the title more. Right. So that brings us to Ollie's next loss. In 1973, he fought, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, 1973, February 31st. Muhammad Ali fights Ken Norton. Please <laughs> explain to me how a prime Ali is going to lose to Ken Norton. It's just not going to happen. It will not happen. We see brawlers that he's fought over the course of his career. Sonny Liston wasn't a brawler, but he could punch. Got him out uh, Got him out of there. Ernie Shavers, got him out of there. George Foreman, got him out of there. Joe Frazier, got him out of there. 
A prime Ali is not losing to Ken Norton. It's just not happening. And the thing is, we're not taking anything away from Norton and Frazier and, and, and guys like that, but it's it's just they they got a lot of shine because Ali came back like a shell of himself. Right. So it made it look competitive with a big name like Ali. So when you, he still was the best. When you look at his resume, guess what? That's the only champion he ever beat. Muhammad Ali. Mm-hmm. What is the the common denominator here? Ali, after he came back, wasn't the same fighter. He had moments where he just couldn't sustain the same kind of output for 15 rounds. He lost close decisions. And and um, I'm just I'm gonna compare it to this. If you look at the Tyson era when he won his title and he was cleaning up the division in the Klitschko era, people said those were weak eras. They weren't weak eras if you really go back and look at the talent in those eras. If you really do your research. They were just so good and they were fighting at their peak at the time that they cleaned up those eras and made them look right. weak. Right. That's what all he did before he got stripped. Right. And that's why guys like Cleveland Williams don't get shot. So let me just give you a couple names that uh, Norton fought and lost to. Jerry Cooney. Never was a champion. Ernie Shavers got knocked out. Was never a champion. Larry Holmes, uh, Muhammad Ali beat him in the rematch. His biggest win besides Ali, we're probably looking at Jerry Corey. Uh, yeah. Foreman knocked him out. Yeah, Jerry Corey would have been his biggest That's win it. next to Ali. That's it. He's nothing wrong with like Norton is a good fighter. He's a good fighter. But when you've only beaten one champion in your resume, you can't be an all-time great. Same with Joe Frazier. You yeah. just can't be. Yeah, and the thing is, people are going to be hating on us for saying this, but it's the truth. In my opinion, Tim Witherspoon is the most talented Philly heavyweight ever, but you never really hear about him getting talked about. So, so. the era that they call the golden era of heavyweights, 1970s, we had Ernie Shavers, Ken Norton, Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali, uh, Foreman, uh, George Chavallo, uh, Jerry Corey, Jerry Corey uh, Cooney, I think was at the end of that. That... Yeah, at the end of that. That is, uh, it's a good era. It's, it's, a, it's a great era. But it was only great because Ali wasn't the guy he was before. Yeah, that's why they call it the golden era. And if we're going to be honest, if you take that era and compare it to the 90s or even today, it doesn't compare. Just being honest. The, but the thing about that is, in the 90s, at least they fought each other. This, the era now, they're, they're, not, they're not mixing up enough, so we can't really say that. It's hard to say. It's true. But the talent-wise, yeah, the talent-wise from this era right now, I will put that on par with any era of all time. Yeah, it's a great. We're in a great heavyweight era, really good heavyweight era. So, anything else you want to add? But to no, just debate us, man, because I know that you guys are going to debate us on this. Let us know what you think. Let us know. We got a lot more coming. Thank you. Easy. Go, 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 go.